Hi viewers, welcome back to Mom and Jess Talk Show. So this is another episode in the Women in Leadership series. And today with me I have Mrs. Tolu Lawrence and she's featuring a topic we refer to as Women in Leadership, looking at the business stroke entrepreneurship perspective. Mrs. Tolu Lawrence is a seasoned guest that has a lot to share with you guys with regards to business. But she's involved in so many events, management, and as well, business. So I'm excited to learn, and I'm sure women in the house, this is for you. Let's get to know what business entrepreneurship could do in our lives. And, you know, in terms of leadership, this is one area that we have a lot of women in the world now that are making millions to the glory of God. They're able to empower others, they're able to build a lot of, you know, industries and all that. So let's learn from Sister Lou Lawrence what it takes, you know, to be, you know, a leader in terms of business and entrepreneurship and get empowered in those areas of, in those sectors of the economy. This is Lou Lawrence, you're welcome to Mom and Jess Talk Show. Uh, we're happy to have you and we're excited to learn from you today. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm glad that you're happy to be here. Yeah, thank you for having me in your home as well. You're welcome. Yes. Um, please, can you just introduce yourself and a bit of what you do? Because there are a lot, I can't even mention them all. My name is Tolope Lawrence. I'm a lecturer. That's what I do, like my career. Then I'm also into businesses. I'm an event manager. I'm a fashion creator. And I also um, I also do um, like a talk show, like Mom and Jess also does. Yes, so like <laughs> like platforms. Yes. I have platforms in which I I try to fulfill my mandate in impacting people's lives. Thank right, you. right. So that's that's a whole lot of package. There's so much more that are going on behind the scenes. So in the meanwhile, in the meantime, first, uh, please do you mind hitting the subscription button to give you a mind of subsequent episodes while at it so here in light of women's months happy women's month by the way ladies watching happy women's month <laughs> cheers to you know our womanhood we pray for more strength and grace in all our endeavors in jesus name so without much ado let's hit the show we're yes, talking about business and entrepreneurship uh, what's your take on business and entrepreneurship relating to women I always, I'm always of this uh, view that women need to have an extra source of income right. besides their major career because an extra stream of income affords you uh, flexibility. Right. It affords you stability. Right. In the age where we are in, we saw what happened two years ago when COVID hit everyone. A lot of companies had to lay off people. So th that thing about job security isn't there anymore mm, in that time. Scary. So people lost their jobs because co some companies couldn't balance anymore. Right. So when that happened, it affected a lot of homes because they couldn't live life the way they were used Before, to. Right, so right. When, when we have extra streams of income, it allows mm. that balance. And also it allows us to be flexible mm. with, our, with our time in terms right. of managing the home and the career. Right. And there's this saying, someone says that when you have more money, you have more options. And when you have more options, more options equals to freedom. Wow. So it Financial freedom. So financial freedom. So because you can afford, when you can afford things, you can decide, okay, we're going for a vacation. What your normal uh, 95 jobs cannot afford you, you can have that luxury. Yeah, that's true. And that leads me to ask our next question. You know, why do you think it's really important besides a 9 to 5 job? Because we have women that are very comfortable with their you know basic nine to five jobs and we also have women that besides their nine to five jobs they have very lucrative businesses that are even paying them far more than their nine to five jobs so why do you think it's relevant for a woman to have something at the corner irrespective of the fact that she's either having a nine to five job or just being a housewife why is it so important because uh i believe women have usually think on the on the long term from unlike the men right because you are able to see things ahead, like I, I, I do that with my husband as well. I'm able to evaluate things ahead and see the, the, the challenges that might come and all that. So when you have, it's just like a plan B. 
Mm. Just mm. like having a plan B. So mm. it allows you to be able to balance up in the in those days when that time comes. Mm. When the difficult when time, the time comes. comes. Because life is full of ups and mm-hmm. downs. And we can't predict. We can never predict. Yeah. Thank you so much for that tip. You know, leveraging is something that has really helped to sustain a lot of homes where the woman is able to, you know, earn some side money here and there. You know, it balances situations and challenges. I mean, look at the time of COVID. A lot of businesses came up online. You know, it was amazing that women took that opportunity of those crises uh, to, 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 you know, come up with ideas as entrepreneurship and started developing things, which makes me, um, you know, ask this question about you because I, I, I know, I know you as a woman that is very entrepreneurial. I follow you up and I see the kind of post you make about your balloon decorations, very lovely, innovative and creative things you do. So in that in that aspect, can you just encourage and share with us um, what actually you know inspired you to pick up such skills? Um, right from my teenage age, I was someone that really loved. That's why I think I cannot do I cannot do just career alone. Hmm. I must just do career and business by the side. I, I've looked at my life and because right from my teenage age, when I was in high school, I saw that I had that thing for doing business, even while schooling. So it's something that I started mm. way from when I was right young. Time. So, and when I started working, I was like, some of my colleagues would say that, you're really doing well in business. Why don't you leave Set this career you. and just <laughs> face your business? Like I said, for me as a person, I must just do the two. Wow. I, can, I feel unfulfilled doing one, one and leaving the other. Wow. So it has to be something I have to mm. do mm. Uh, all along. So uh, because of that, at every... As I, as I was growing up, initially it started out with business where I, I, in the uni I was doing fabric business. Hmm. I was selling fabrics among students. Wow. For students that can't afford to buy a whole the share, you know, I encourage hmm. them. I'm a shy person by nature when I was growing up. Really? But you don't yeah, look like one? <laughs> yeah, because this is what business has done to me. Oh, wow. it's opened it's opened me open, up. Yeah, it's opened right. me up. Hmm. Because initially I was like, how would I approach people and say, let me let me sell so the approach i used there was going to my friends rooms and when i go to their rooms they would do the talking and that was how it started expanding Exposing you as well so uh, it built up that confidence in you. me to now you know start exploring mm. and um i and this there's this thing that's very important is that you need to start small don't be too ambitious to be like i want to get everything mm-hmm. all at once you need to start small and grow with your customers. Wow, wow, I'm encouraged. And just to come in there, um, for myself, I feel like I'm not good with you know persuading people to buy, and I maybe perhaps I like the guy, lack the business acumen, and there might be a lady out there too that could be having the same challenge, not having that business acumen. Could you just encourage us? How do we build up our you know momentum in trying to you know? Look into businesses and see what aspect we call. One thing that is very important in business is that look at look inward and see what you're passionate about. Right. It may not necessarily be about buying and selling. It might be other things. It might be like designing webs the website graphics and all that. It might be something outside just uh, an exchange between like goods. Goods. It might be services that you can render. Okay. Okay. You could you could be like a, you, you could be good in like encouraging people. Then you can set out to learn skills in coaching. So it's not necessarily about having that that's ad thing that that ad uh, copy thing or whatever right. they are trying to sell. Mm-hmm. So try and see within you what are you passionate about, and there you build up from that. Wow! Thank you so much, viewers. Just a recap. She's basically just explaining to us to invest in our skills, invest in your gift. What gift have you got there? Are you good with your It could even be about writing books. Mm-hmm. And selling books. Yeah, and selling books. Wow, wow. Thank you so much for that thing. So probably uh, if you are watching, you could consider anything, any gift or passion, anything you're passionate about, you could turn it into, you know, a business venture. And I pray the Lord will help you as we do so. In Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I would like for you to share with us, Mrs. Tolu, your success story because I believe that in any business venture or in startup, we will have challenges along the way. How were you able to overcome those challenges to get to where you are today? Because I know you are doing very well in your business and everything you're doing. Share with us. The first lesson I learned was as a teenager. Right. 
I was doing, um, my mom has a supermarket then, right. so I was making this um, drinks, pineapple drinks. Wow! So I make this pineapple drinks, I have a store there to put it and I make sales. So I got to a point, I was so engaged in what I was doing besides that business, that I now had to, because I usually go and source my pineapple because I was not using the concentrate, I was using the natural, the natural pineapple. Uh, pineapple. So I, I took my money then, you know, very money then, <laughs> and I gave it to my elder sister. I said, please, I know, I know, I know I'm going to school, I won't have time. Can you please help me get pineapples? And that's a major lesson that my, my dad had to point me to that. Sometimes you need to do some things yourself. yourself. Very cogent thing that is needed in your business, you have to take it up yourself. So, and I now give her the money that my own profit and everything, and my sister, please, I know you will have time, help me get pineapples. And right. she went and got, <laughs> I can imagine. So that was like training. Bad pineapples. <laughs> Bad pen up is alright, oh. tasteless. And I was like, it it be hard then. Oh, wow. wow. My dad said that's the first lesson. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, so and you know, it affected me then to balance up and I think that was a lesson that I had to take at that point in time. Then another thing is sometimes you don't get paid for your passion. And when you're starting out, right? Like for the event management stuff, when I started uh, helping people with weddings. I, I was this person that I like planning weddings, parties. I always, um, whenever, then when I was growing up, I usually buy this wedding planner magazines. Right. So I, I invest my money in you buying see, and see. I study and all that. And God also gave me this intuition to, you know, whenever I'm thinking about something and I, a new idea, I see that the next few months it becomes an idea that becomes wow. a goal. So I was now helping our friends without getting paid so sometimes uh, when you're starting out don't think about the money so the first set of few weddings that i did and early enough i was i didn't get anything i was always doing like let me just help you out right. with your wedding just like, reaching out. look I, I i assisted a friend of mine to plan a bridesmaid's outfit mm -hmm. i went and planned their own outfits for our wedding for free of charge free of charge i didn't get any any gain from it I, I also helped out in colors for the weddings. Wow. So I was in, involved in that aspect without getting any money. Then there was another couple that came after then. I also assisted. Another couple came after then. I also assisted. Wow. Then the major break I would have, I had to now kids. I was like amazed because it's, it's also a lesson. It means that God is counting those days where you are putting so in the good. effort. Because the next uh, wedding that I had to now plan, I had not plan for a wedding of over 1,000 people. You keep me not. Yes. And I made a lot of wow. money. <laughs> because, oh, yeah, because I, had, I was involved in a lot of stuff there. Mm. I was an event manager. So I had people that were working under me, like vendors, caterers, designers. So I, I was actively involved in a lot. It was like a, a major big break for me. Wow. Because I was handling a big wedding. Wow. wow. So... And I was encouraged because I was like, these people, for them to have faith in me to just take up, you this, have to give your best. To, uh, and when I was going to, with the bride to do some uh, sessions with our decorator, the ideas I was bringing out, she was like, hey, my pocket, my finance, my money. Do you think I can, I can afford this? I'm like, no, you can always have what you want. You know, and you budget. Know, and budget and still get the tasteful thing. So I was like, no, this is what I want. I was telling the vendor, you must do this for me. And, and when the wedding day came, oh my God, the kind of re uh, recommendation and uh, re and it. comments I got after it was fulfilling. They wow. said the bride's parents came and saw the all. They were like, they didn't mm. know that I could do this. Amazing. And <laughs> and Amazing. and then the, the groom's parents came. And it all started, the first phase that started with the wedding was me planning out the Ashwaya Bees. That was the first stage. Mm -hmm. So when I supplied the first Ashwaya Bees to the they were impressed. Groups, they were impressed. To the extent that the wife of the, of the, the mother of the groom well, felt like, ah, she can also do it. Mm -hmm. But the other said, no, she's the one that will do it. Because of the way I did the packaging. So mm -hmm. when you have an opportunity, that's another important thing. When you have an opportunity to do something, always go the extra mile because you never can tell How what that extra go. mile would, mm. would do for you. And then the terms of making references. Yeah, because, and people saw yeah. that and my friends saw the wedding and were like, oh, you have to help me plan my wedding. Wow, and, and then it grew from there. Yeah. Oh, so much to learn from that, hey? 
but I believe it took patience. Viewers watching, don't yeah. give up. You start small, <laughs> as she has pointed it to us. You start small. You might not make gain in the beginning, but guess what? Your people are watching, and if you're actually doing a good job, they will reference you at sure. the end of the day. You start cashing out. Wow, that's interesting. And sharing with us for that one, there could be obstacles that are actually stopping women, you know, because they could have these ideas, being creative, being, uh, you know, you need, they, they understand they have this thing, but they just need an oomph. They just need something to push them. Do you have an advice for such kind of. Yeah, I people? think uh, one has to be prepared. There's this thing. you don't go to a battle ill prepared. If you go to any battle ill prepared, you know that. It's either you're, you're gone or you're on your own. Or you're, or you're own. So you don't go to a battle ill prepared. You have to be prepared. You have to mm. make up your mind and ask yourself how much do you want to succeed? How much do you want this? I think it's a very, very important question to ask yourself at the beginning because right. there are challenges. I wouldn't right. lie. Right. There are challenges along the way that will come. But when you know that you have that drive because you have that determination to succeed, it keeps pushing you, it keeps mm. pushing you. Mm. And a, a lot of excuses that a lot of people uh, give that prevents them from mm. venturing into entrepreneurship is like, for especially amongst women, is the fact that how do I juggle child care and my business? Absolutely. Another thing they ask is that, uh, oh, I don't have the finance. Finance is always a problem. <laughs> I, I, I don't have the finance. The lack of self confidence, like you were saying, that mm. what do they need to make mm. that boost? Mm. The market saturation. So, the very important thing is when you have an idea, right. ask yourself, is your idea profitable? Because sometimes you can have an incredible idea, oh, very loving idea, but there's no money in that idea. So, it's not what it is when you have an idea that can bring in the profits. So just know that that's not what you need to do as a business. So when you want to start out a business, the first thing that you need to do is try and make sure that you, you what you, the idea you have, that's why I said, don't always aspire to start big. big. Right. Start out small. See that the idea you're bringing, you're putting out, people are interested in it. Right. So when you have like a payable customer to your idea, then you can now think about expanding. You can now think about how you can get funding mm. on, so that on the long run, you are, you are able to build yourself, yourself gradually and go with your customers. Wow, thank you so much, Mrs. Tolu Lawrence. I have learned something, I'm sure you have too. Memphis, you have any take home for us today? Like I said, uh, ask yourself, how much do you want this? How much do you want? that determination to succeed, is it there? Because for women that are, uh, that are out there that are, are now successful in businesses, there are a lot of characteristics that they, they, they have imbibed that actually worked for them right. to make them successful. One is don't take unnecessary risk. Hmm. Sit down and ask yourself, be frank with yourself. Women, that's what women, successful women in, in businesses don't take unnecessary risks. They sit down, they evaluate before taking action. Then another thing about when you want to start out is don't don't be like a Jack. I know it all. Always ask for help where you think you don't have that expertise. Then oh, it's always advisable for any business you want to start up. Learn a skill. We are in the age where you can learn a lot from the internet. Right. There's YouTube there. She was mentioning about, uh, about the balloon business. I actually went online and, and I was looking at wow, and I trained myself from there. from there. So it's not as if wow. I went for a training, training. course uh, mm -hmm. on balloon uh, yeah, so. decoration and all that. There are a lot of put, uh, put, uh, resources out there now because of the internet age we are in that could help you build up that hidden interest or that uh, passion, passion you have in right. you. Right. Wow, thank you so much. I, I, I know this will bless a lot of women watching, including myself. So ladies, let's get it started. Our passions, let's start doing something. Are you gifted in writing? Start writing, start scribbling something. It starts from a single sentence and then a book is made. If you are gifted with plating or doing something with your fingers, why not go for it? This is Women's Fund and this is the time for us to inspire women out there. On this note, we end this episode. 
God bless you and see you next episode. Remain blessed. Bye. Bye.